now tuned in. You are now tuned in to the realest show on YouTube with your host, the Angry Man. We are back yet again. And like I told you before, this is going to be one of the realest conversations about the music industry that you have ever heard in your life. Okay? I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I'm not going to play around with it. I'm going to break it down like a fraction so that you can understand it fully. Okay? Shout out to Yvette said, I am queen of the hateful eight. Let's go, AM. <laughs> Appreciate you. Shout out to INP. He says, salute AM, the light skin God. Break it down to a fraction. <laughs> Shout out to J. Jermaine. He said, take that New York L, fam. J. Jermaine. J. Jermaine. J. Jermaine. When, when has... New York ever taken an L, bruh? When has New York ever taken an L? Let's, let's be real about that. Because I, I notice nowadays in this day and age, there, there's a whole lot of, there's a whole lot of people getting real comfortable with their New York hate. When has New York taken the L, bruh? Stop it. Stop it, bro. Stop it. <laughs> you got you to gotta get, get that hate out your blood. <laughs> Shout out to Major Jones. <laughs> Shout out to Jeremiah. He said, blessing the masses. Get them AM. Activate the signal. <laughs> hey, yo, make sure y'all hit... The cash app. Make sure y'all hit the 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 like button. Make sure y'all support the show. Anybody to drop a hundred or more will be a sponsor of the show. Appreciate you, Jacob. Uh, first of all, let let, let me break something down to you about New York, J. Jermaine. Let, let me break something down to you, okay? Even you niggas that's trying to say the Knicks, right? If you think that New York is taking an L because of the New York Knicks, or you think New York is taking an L because of something Diddy going through, or any other rapper for that matter, you, you obviously don't know what New York is. You, you, you want to know what New York is? New York is the city so nice they named it twice. New York is the one place that if you can make it there, you can make it anywhere. The Big Apple, the concrete jungle, the place that has birthed numerous superstars, numerous everything new york is the capital of the world bruh there's nothing on this planet that you can't find in new york city from people religions characters races music food culture there is nothing in this world that you can't find in New York City. New York City is a character in and of itself. It don't matter how many times the Knicks lose. It don't matter how many rappers get deleted or arrested. Doesn't matter what's going on there. New York will always be New York. And guess what else? A lot of you niggas will always be jealous of New York.
Shout out to DG. He said, blessings. <laughs> So stop all of that. Stop stop all of that, okay? Stop all of that hate. Shout out to Shell Shock for the membership. <laughs> My man Frank, old blue eyes. He said, bam, 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 Start spreading the news. I'm leaving today. I've got to be a part of it. New York, New York. <laughs> These vagabond shoes. <laughs> Stop it. Cut it out. Stop all that hate. Get all that hate out of your blood. You feel what I'm saying? Get, get all of that hate out of your blood. If you know the history of New York, you, you wouldn't hate on it. See, New York is the first city that black people migrated from the South to get away from Jim Crow. They migrated from the South to get away from Jim Crow and, and many of them ended up in Harlem which became a black Mecca. Black folks were able to go to Harlem and see more black people there than they ever seen in their life living happy away from Jim Crow, away from the BS that was going on in the South. You understand? There's jazz clubs there. There's some of the greatest jazz players to ever live have played in those clubs. You feel me? You were NBA player. You wasn't even considered official if you didn't play at the Rucker. New York has the Statue of Liberty, which has always been a symbol of hope from people coming from countries where they felt oppressed, where they felt they didn't have opportunity. They poured into New York Harbor for the American dream. What are we talking about? What are we talking about? Shout out to Shell Shop. Says, showing love, big homie. I got to hear your take on this ish tonight. <laughs> now, y'all want to get upset, but I'm going to tell you the truth. I don't care what city it is in America. I don't care what city it is in America. Every city is in the shadow of New York. You can get mad about that if you like, but it's the truth. I said it. I'll debate anybody about it. Every city is in the shadow of New York. All of them. All of them. Shout out to D-Rock Den for the gifted membership. <laughs>
You said not Atlanta? Are you are you serious? Are you serious? You you can't be serious. You you can't be serious. You 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 cannot be serious. You cannot be serious. You can't be serious. Let me tell you something about New York. For those of you that never been. You can literally go to New York. Visit. You can literally go visit New York, right? Visit New York, go to Midtown, and just stand out there and just soak up the energy. New York is the type of city where if you go there and you just look around at how everybody's moving, how everybody's operating, you know what it'll make you do? It'll make you go back to wherever you from, whatever, whatever city you live in or whatever town you live in, and guess what it'll make you do? It'll make you grind harder. It'll make you grind harder. Point blank period. It'll make you grind harder. Shout out to LaKeith. He said, bro, we're going to have to talk about the city shadow thing. You bring up the pizza. I'll bring the Tex TX brisket. Hold it down, AM. Appreciate you. <laughs> Shout out to D-Rock Den. He said, damn, man, they got it in for us men. <laughs> Shout out to Dwayne said for the collection plate. New York will make you grind harder. It'll make you go harder in the paint. I'll tell you something else too. Because of the environment in New York, because of the amount of people that live in New York, because of the amount of people that are condensed into that city, because of the variety of people that are condensed in that city. Because of the aggressiveness of that city. That environment has produced some of the most interesting people you will ever meet in your life. Say what you want. So anytime I see somebody saying, yo, New Yorkers do this and New Yorkers do that. When I see niggas talking about New Yorkers wearing Tims and the women being aggressive or whatever, it lets me know you don't know nothing about New York. Because New York has a wide variety of New Yorkers, a wide variety of New York accents. So when you're trying to pinpoint it to one particular thing, it, it let me know you don't know nothing about New York culture. You don't know anything about New York culture. Queens niggas are not the same as Brooklyn niggas. Brooklyn niggas are not the same as Bronx niggas. Harlem niggas are not the same as, as Queens niggas or Brooklyn niggas. Like, it's, it's, it's a different. You can even break it all the way down to there being a difference between bed dudes and Brownsville dudes. A difference between Southside Jamaica dudes and Far Rockaway dudes. A difference between dudes from the Lower East Side and dudes from Harlem. Like, there's, there's such a diversity, you can't, you can't put it in a box. You can't put it in a box. And I'm not speaking from a person that was 
born and raised and only was in New York. I'm speaking as a person who have lived all over the place. I've lived all over the place. And while there are other cities that do hold a special place in my heart, there's nowhere like New York. Nowhere. Y'all can get mad about that if you want. There's nowhere like New York. I'm sorry. It's just not. It just isn't. It just isn't, bro. It's just different. And it and it's part of it's it's so embedded in American culture. It's so embedded, like y'all don't even realize it, right? Like for instance, I'll give you a prime example. How many of y'all would say that House Party was a classic movie for the culture? How many of y'all would say House Party was a classic movie for the culture? Y'all would say House Party is a classic movie for the culture, right? Well, guess what? You can look at House Party and see that House Party is clearly on the West Coast. That movie was shot on the West Coast. But guess what? Yeah, guess what? Kid and Play is from New York. The dude that played Staff and his other homies, I'm gonna kick your fucking, they from New York. I could run down the list, bro. Hoodlum about Bumpy Johnson coming from the South, going to New York. American gangster Frank Lucas coming from the South, going to New York. Trading places with Eddie Murphy, New York. Hayden Full, New York. Juice, New York. And look, I'm not taking nothing away from Boys in the Hood. Classic movie. I'm not taking nothing away from Minister Society. Classic movie. Like real talk. But let's be real about it. Let's be real about it. Like I can name so many actors so many movies so many i can name so much so many things that are connected to new york like real talk do the right thing he got game above the rim and look, as much as y'all, as much as y'all, like, yo, do me a favor. I, I want y'all to do me a favor. Name for me the West Coast's most legendary rapper. Name for me the West Coast's most legendary rapper. Name for me the most West, the West Coast most legendary rapper.
Pac is from Harlem. Pac is from Harlem. Somebody said Ice T. Last time I checked, Ice T play a cop. <laughs> Last time I checked for the past what? For the past 30 years, Ice-T been a New York cop. Correct me if I'm wrong. And, and for all of you in here trying to qualify, from all of you in here trying to qualify, let, let's be real, okay? Snoop is not at Tupac's level. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Cut it out. Cut it out. Wait a minute. So y'all, so y'all really, so y'all really gonna sit here and tell me that Snoop is on Pac's level? This is how bad. This is how desperately y'all want to win this discussion. Y'all really gonna tell me if if you if you're willing to tell me that Snoop is on Pac's level? I I don't know what to say. He says Snoop's idols are Rock Him and Slick Rick. That's facts. <laughs> That's facts. And guess what? Ice T's first song that really was hot. Guess who he was mimicking? I, I want to see how many real hip hop heads are in here. Ice T's song that first got hot. Who was he mimicking? So so where did so let me ask you this question. Where did Snoop get that from? Lottie Dottie, we like to party, we don't cause problems, and we don't bother nobody. Where did where did Snoop get that from? On doggy style. Who y'all think y'all talking to? I had doggy style. Lottie Dottie, we like to party. Where did he get that from? Exactly. Exactly. Ice T was listening to Schooly D. Stop playing. Stop playing. And for all you Negroes in the Bay Area that love Digital Underground, Shock G was from Queens. Stop playing. Stop playing this game. Stop playing this game. Stop playing this game. Y'all don't want to play this game. New York got too much history. Stop the disrespect. NY got too much history. 
too much history. Stop it. Cut it out. To Ice Cube got his solo start from Public Enemy. Like, stop. Stop playing. Stop playing. Y'all need to stop playing that game. Like real talk. New York will always be New York. Always. It's always going to be the city that never sleeps. Always. But we got to get into this topic about P. Diddy. And P. Diddy, in my opinion, is the new Teflon Don. I'm going to say it right now for the record. And if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But I'm going to say it for the record. I don't think Diddy going to jail. I thought he was yesterday. But I have since changed my mind. I'm going to tell you why I changed my mind. Because now that I've heard some of the facts about the case and the investigation, I don't think, I don't think Diddy's going to jail. I don't. I don't. Now, I'm going to break down for you why I don't think he's going to jail. Right? So, and by the way, let's get the likes up. Hit the cash app and support the show. We need a sponsor of the show. Anybody that drop 100 or more will be a sponsor. I think P. Diddy is the new Teflon Don. I don't think they're going to be able to do P. Diddy the way they did R. Kelly. I don't think they're going to be able to do P. Diddy the way they did Bill Cosby. I don't think they're going to be able to do it. I don't think they're going to be able to do it. Shout out to Billy Goat Gruff. He said his lawyer, Benjamin Bratt. <laughs> Shout out to QD Exec. He said Ice T ran with Zulu Nation and his manager was a high ranking Zulu member. Ice Cube's first album was produced by Bomb Squad, Hank Shockley, PE. <laughs> now, People are asking me why they saying, why angry man, why do you think with all the mountain evidence against P Diddy, why do you think P Diddy ain't going down? Well, number one, they don't have no evidence on him. They don't have no evidence on P Diddy. None. The only thing they have are people saying he did something. That's all they got. That's all they got. Because here's the thing. Yesterday, they raided his house. Yes. They raided his house because, 
They had a warrant to raid his house. But guess what? They had a warrant to raid his house, but they didn't have a warrant to arrest him. So you got to think about that for a second. Now, his lawyer came out and said, Mr. Combs is cooperating with the investigation. That's the reason why he wasn't at the house. He knew they were coming over there. That's the reason why he left his kids, because he knew they wasn't going to get arrested. He probably told them, yo, they coming over here. They're going to go through the stuff, just cooperate with them, all of that good stuff. Now, if that's what he doing, there was nothing in there worth taking, even though they took some stuff out of there. They took phones. They took a bunch of stuff. But guess what? It's the next day. Ain't nobody said nothing about issuing no warrant for his arrest. Ain't nobody went to go pick him up. They said he pretty much free to go wherever he want to go. So guess what this tells me? If they had a warrant to raid two of his homes simultaneously, that lets me know that somebody's running their mouth. Probably Cassie. Probably Cassie. Probably Cassie and a couple other people cooperating with the investigation. Because guess what? If they had any solid evidence on him, they wouldn't have just raided his house. They would have arrested him too. But they didn't arrest him. Now, here's the other thing that I paid attention to that most folks probably ain't paying no mind. Whenever they be talking about somebody that's accused of allegedly doing something or getting into something or whatever, right? They talk about them a certain way on the news. You feel me? They talk about them in a very unflattering way, right? Shout out to QD exec. He said they are pulling the thread when they run through those devices and other high society members are implicated in certain stuff. They will leave him be facts. 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 So. Here's the thing. You got to keep in mind, Puffy ain't just start being rich. This man is basically a billionaire. This dude has been rich since I was in high school. And I ain't been in high school in a long time. This dude been rich since the 90s. So he's had time to not only accumulate money, but to accumulate influence, to accumulate power. And let's be real, this is the whole reason why I had the whole conversation with y'all at the beginning about New York City. Because he's not just a rich guy in any other city. He's a rich guy in New York. That's different. That's different. You say what you want to say. You, you can, I, and I said this a while back. I said, do you have any idea how powerful this dude is in NYC? Shout out to Billy Goat Gruff. He said, if it was something, he been cleaned out that crib. Yeah, his, his, his reputation is over. His public image is done. His public image is done, right? But people are looking like, oh, he sold, he sold off, he sold off revolt. <coughs> You know why? Because he know it's wartime. He know it's wartime and he know he got to fill them. He got to keep all of them coffers filled up in case he got to go to war in a legal battle.
But this is what I noticed when I listen to the news now, right? Every news reporter is super careful about how they talk about him. Mr. Combs this, Mr. Combs that, allegedly this, allegedly that. It could be this, but we don't know. And see, we just want to keep believing that it is impossible for black men to have power. We keep wanting to believe that. And I think it's a mistake. Because let's be real about it. If the man didn't have any power... How has he been able to operate and do what he do for this long? And I've heard all the stories. I've heard all the wild stories. I've heard all the wild stories. I've heard all of the wild stories, like real talk. HBL said, man, you talking BS. Okay. You ain't got to believe nothing I'm saying. You ain't got to believe nothing I'm saying. See, I've, I've had numerous conversations with you guys up here where I talked about, the, you know, money. And everybody's like, yo, money ain't everything. In this country, it is. In this country, it is. The only reason why you don't know, you feel me? The only reason why you don't know is because you ain't never had enough of it. You ain't never had enough of it. You don't know what it's like to be a billionaire. You don't know how much power comes with that kind of money especially if on your way to being a billionaire you did things correctly in other words you line the right pockets you align yourself with the right people and all of these type of things if if you look, look i'm telling you right now I'm telling you right now So everybody's talking about Puff Daddy, P. Diddy, and now they're trying to pull Jay-Z into the conversation, right? Everybody's shocked and surprised at the allegations coming out about P. Diddy, right? But here's my question. If you have rappers that grew up watching Scarface, that grew up watching Goodfellas, that grew up watching The Godfather, that grew up watching all of these crime movies, all of these crime dramas that are about organized crime and mob families and all of that. And, and keep in mind, Let's not sit here and pretend like that has not been a heavy part of hip hop culture. Okay. You, you got numerous dudes calling themselves certain things. You, you got uh, Irving Lorenzo of Murder Inc. calling himself Irv Gotti. You got Yo Gotti in Memphis. You got Capone from Capone and Noriega. You got, you got all of these individuals naming themselves after popular gangsters, right? Not to mention the fact that most rappers 
always have an entourage that's gonna have dudes that are from the streets, dudes that are from uh, uh may have been, just been released from prison or whatever, right? So you have the mentality of organized crime. You have individuals that are prone to criminal activity and you're adding into that money. So why is everybody surprised that these individuals are operating like the mafia? Biggie called his crew junior mafia. Biggie referred to himself as Frank White, which is the king of New York, which was a mob boss. Why is everybody surprised? Why is everybody surprised? See, I'm going to tell you what the issue is. Y'all think that because these dudes are entertainers, that they don't do anything outside of entertainment. But the reality is they do. The reality is a lot of these rap crews are gangs. If we're being totally honest about it, a lot of these rap crews are affiliated with gangs. They're affiliated with the Bloods, the Crips, the Vice Lords, the GDs. So I'm trying to figure out why y'all are so surprised at this. And the reality is, if you really want to be honest, somebody like a P. Diddy or somebody like a Jay-Z has way more money than any mafia boss that came before him. Why is it you think that these individuals don't have the ability to have influence in law enforcement, to have influence in politics, to have influence in a lot of high places. Now, earlier I said, I don't think Puffy's going to jail. I don't. I think Puffy is the new Teflon Don. I think that he's gonna have to do something extremely reckless for them to put him in jail. Now, here's the downside to this. Tremont said it's almost mandatory. You're 100% you're correct. Because guess what? And most people don't wanna acknowledge this. The music industry has always had an element of organized crime. It, it has always had an element of organized crime. So when you look at hip hop as it began to grow, right? You have individuals that get involved in hip hop that's not hip hop artists, <coughs> like your Jimmy Henchmans, your WAC 100s, your, um, your J Prince's, your, uh, your kin of Supreme McGriff's. Like you, you all, if you go back and look at the paid in full album, on the back of the album, there's a guy on that album um, named uh, Kelvin Martin. Kelvin Martin was the original 50 Cent a dude from Fort Greene, Brooklyn, who used to go around robbing everybody, right? So what you have witnessed, whether you want to admit it or not, is the meteoric rise of an organized element of crime to hip hop. See, a lot of people sit back and they say, oh, it's unfair that they created the hip hop police and had a dossier on everybody. Nah, they did that for a reason. 
Y'all think they did it because of racism. No, they did it for a reason. They did it for a reason. BMF was tied into the music industry. So let's not sit back and pretend like we don't know what we're looking at. <clears throat> let's not pretend like we don't know what we're looking at. Now, you should understand this when you see um what's the what's the name of um what's the name of young thugs group you got two groups in atlanta that are currently under rico charges rico is something you only use for organized crime Rico is something you only use for organized crime. Shout out to Billy Goat Gruff. Appreciate you. <laughs> YSL. YSL is a is a um YSL is a Rico is a Rico case. They they they're getting hit with Rico. Let's not forget about uh 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 King Vaughn and and all of them up in Chicago. Let's not forget about um um Bobby Schmurda and his whole crew. Let's not forget about asap rocky and the asap crew let's not forget like yo i'm telling you what this is nobody else is going to talk about this because they want to sit back and pretend oh all of these guys are just entertainers and they don't really get down like that and like when is that myth going to be alleviated see the reason why a lot of you don't think they do anything is because the only thing you know about them is what you see on television, what you hear in the music, but you don't see the stuff that happens behind the scenes. Prodigy wasn't joking when he said there's a war going on outside. No man is safe from. Or maybe you didn't hear the story about master P throwing pimp C in a trunk and Jay Prince had to put in the phone call for them to let him go. Maybe y'all didn't hear that story. Now, if you think for one second, that these type of dudes don't have power and influence. And see, when you look at somebody like a Jay-Z or a P. Diddy, these are dudes that have reached a new level. They have reached a new echelon. P. Diddy is worth nine hundred million dollars he's basically a billionaire so even if let's say for argument's sake that he paid cassie that 30 million dollars so what and some people i'm gonna tell you how, how people that ain't got no money will look at it people that ain't got no money they'll look at it like this I mean, I'm saying if he's worth 900 million and he got to pay out 30 million, now he's only worth 870 million. Not true. Because when you're worth that kind of money, you got to take into account how much money's coming in. You feel what I'm saying? How much income, how much money? That's just the net worth. 
how much money is being generated how much money is coming in you see what i'm saying and it's the same thing for somebody like jay-z see when you get to that point where you got money like that you're not even a person anymore you're a business you're a business entity and I've been saying this over and over and everybody keep acting like, you know what I'm saying? Everybody keep acting like, I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm telling you right now, right now at this moment, money in this country, it matters. It matters the way, look at how they're handling this situation with P. Diddy. You ain't seen nothing on the news saying, yeah, we're, we're looking for, you know, P Diddy. Like remember when the, when the OJ situation happened, they was chasing him on the freeway. You see anybody chasing P Diddy? Hmm. Billy Grove Guff said NY dudes, you naming minus J Prince, etc. NY King. You see anybody chasing him? Ain't nobody chasing P. Diddy. Nobody's chasing him. They literally said on the news, I saw countless news reports. They said, um, this might lead to an arrest, meaning there's no warrant issued for him. He can go and come as he pleases right now. If he wants to get on his private jet and fly to a non-extradition country, he can do that. I don't think he's done it. I don't think he's done it. And I'm going to tell you the reason why I don't think he's done it. He know they can't play with him. He's got too much money and too much influence. They can't play with him. What they did is they went to his houses, ransacked his houses, looking for evidence because somebody's telling, somebody's giving them information. They detained his children. But guess what? Once they ransacked that house and found what they thought was what they were going to need, you know what they did? They, they took the cuffs off them kids and went on about their business. That's the reason why he left them kids there. Because he knew they wasn't going to, and they not really kids. Most, most of them, a couple of them are grown. But the reason why he left his children there, because he knew they wasn't going to arrest them. Let me tell you something. P. Diddy has a legal team out of this world. You hear me? P. Diddy has a legal team out of this world. There's an interview that 50 Cent did where he was talking about, you know, if somebody come at him sideways, he'll, he'll push the button. And dude was like, what you mean? He said, oh, you, you, you think I won't do it? You, you think I won't do it? He said, bro, I got a, I got a, I got my, my team of lawyers. It's like a, they're like, they're like the offensive line of a, like he, like he was being dead serious. When you get to that level where you got money, look at the situation with Fannie Willis. Fannie Willis is up there in court. She's supposed to be prosecuting Donald Trump for, for whatever, for Rico or whatever, right? These dudes done got information and did a uno reverse. Here it is. She's the district attorney of Fulton County, which is a huge county. And she's not, Fannie Willis is powerful in Georgia. She's not no slouch. She has power in that state. You feel me? And Trump, Pulled an Uno reverse. Instead of him, he's probably never going to see a courtroom for that case. Instead, she's sitting in there ass answering questions about who was giving her Johnson. And it wasn't one lawyer asking her questions. It was a whole team of lawyers 
Y'all remember the Simpsons back in the day when Mr. Burns had a legal issue? He would have a whole team of lawyers go up in there. So much so that they had to find extra chairs for him to sit there. Bro, when you get to that level where you can have a team of lawyers on retainer at all times, that's some next level stuff. That, that's the type of stuff where, guess what? A person can say something about, oh, I'm going to sue you, or I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. And guess what? They can have you tied up in litigation for so long that the case won't even see the courtroom for, for years. Right now, as we speak with that YSL case, they talking like that case is going to last into 2027. Billy Ghost said, please say it again. What the F was she thinking? Is she crazy? <laughs> Let me tell you something. I don't care who you are. I don't care who you are. Trying to prosecute a billionaire in this country? FR said deplete their whole bag on court call. But see, that's the thing. You can't deplete a billionaire's bag. <laughs> that's the thing. You can't play. Look, this is what they did to Irv Gotti and them. Irv Gotti and them went broke. They went broke on that federal case. They drained them of their money. See, Irv Gotti ain't no billionaire. Irv Gotti ain't no billionaire. Billionaires are different, bro. I said this to my wife one day, and she was like, nah, because like it was a situation where D.L. Hughley said that Kanye sent some of his goons over there. And D.L. Hughley's talking about some, you going to jail, uh, you, you sent your goons at me, and blah, blah, blah. And my wife said, Kanye, keep playing, he going to go to jail. I said, go to jail? <laughs> what? <laughs> what billionaire you know went to prison? Somebody, name me a billionaire right now that went to prison. Name a billionaire. Give me, give me one billionaire that went to prison. <laughs> Just give me one. This is one. Bertie Madoff wasn't a billionaire. Bernie Madoff wasn't a billionaire. Now, Epstein is a different story. Y'all know why he went. Y'all know why he went. Y'all, y'all know why he went. So there's El Chapo. Come on, bro. You talking about a dope dealer? Like, look, cut it out, man. I'm talking about dudes that are legitimate businessmen. You feel me? Now, I'll give you Epstein. I'll give you Epstein. But there's a reason for him. There's a reason for him. You know the reason. I'm not going to get into it. But there's a reason for him. You feel what I'm saying? Now, Puffy might, you said, Reese said he was. No, he wasn't. No, he wasn't. You think he was worth that? Do y'all know what a Ponzi scheme is? Yeah, Epstein is an exception. Do y'all know what a Ponzi scheme is? Truth and reality undefeated said Epstein wasn't a billionaire. I didn't know that. 
Bill Cosby wasn't a billionaire. You thought, wait a minute. So when Bernie Madoff got arrested and convicted, you think he was worth $17 billion when he got arrested? Oh, hold on. I'm, I'm going to ask this again. You thought that when, when Bernie Madoff got arrested, that he was worth $17 billion? Do, do you know the reason why? Look, let, let me school y'all because y'all 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 talking crazy right now. Do you know the reason why a Ponzi scheme falls apart? You, you know the reason why a Ponzi scheme falls apart? It falls apart because you can't. You're you're robbing Peter to pay Paul. It falls apart when you can't pay out the money because you don't have the money. You don't have the money. Billy Go said, plus Bernie effed other billionaires. Exactly. He, how you going to be, how you going to be a billionaire with somebody else's money? How you gonna be a billionaire with somebody else's money? So if he was worth that, how did everybody lose their money? If Bernie Madoff was worth 17 billion, why is it when he got arrested, they didn't seize his funds and pay everybody back? Because it was nothing to pay back. Duh. The whole reason why he started the Ponzi scheme is because he was he didn't he didn't have he didn't have the money. That's the whole reason. Y'all do know what a Ponzi scheme is, right? JR said he was a false billionaire on paper. Facts. LW said money may have, may save combs, but not how many think. Cosby had 600 million and is sitting few ways to beat their justice system if they want you, do you know how? Look, here's the thing. Here's the thing, this, this is the part that y'all keep leaving out. Cause there's two parts to it, okay? Cause I said this earlier in the show. I said Puffy has been rich for a long time. I said, depending on how he operated as he was growing his wealth is going to determine a lot. In other words, while he was growing that wealth, what relationships was he creating? Who was he dealing with? Now, this is something I heard. I don't know how true it is. But somebody said that Puffy, I heard somebody say that Puffy, has somebody said that that the people that are filing lawsuits against Puffy said that Puffy has hidden cameras in his house, in every room in his house. And when Puffy be throwing them parties, he's caught a lot of people 
in compromising positions. So guess what? Depending on who those people are may be the determining factor because I'm going to tell you right now, the way they're talking about this man in the news, they're handling him with kid gloves. With everything that he's been accused of, you would think they would be talking about him crazy in the news, and they're not. They're not. Everything they're saying about him is Mr. Combs this and Mr. Combs that, and he hasn't been arrested, and he's free to go wherever he wants to go. Like, the way they're talking about him is really suspect. Shout out to Seeker of Truth. He said, paying support. Appreciate you. Yeah, I, I personally don't think he going anywhere. You know what I think is going to happen? What I think is going to happen is this. They raided his house. They confiscated a bunch of electronic devices. You know what I think is going to happen? I think it's going to just slowly i think it's gonna get the slow fade that's what i think i think it's gonna i think it's gonna get the slow fade ron h said why are they playing ads on your live because they're supposed to what do you mean they're supposed to what are you talking about They're supposed to play ads on my live. What are you talking about? <clears throat> Said Jay-Z should have been first, to be honest. Look, what, what are y'all talking about? Y'all are not listening. Y'all ain't listening. I don't think y'all hear me. <laughs> I don't think, I don't think y'all hear me. Like I, I legit don't think y'all hear me. I don't see Puffy getting arrested, much less going to prison. If they're having this much difficulty arresting him, if they're having this much difficulty arresting him, what makes you think they're gonna actually prosecute him and actually put him in a prison? And speaking of ads and got to get paid, yo, I need 10 people to hit the cash app. Yo, we've been, we've been live for a couple of hours now. And the last person, the last person to contribute to the show was over an hour ago. Hit the cash app and support the show. LW said he bit the hand that fed him. The way money may help him is to use it to elude the justice system. He's ninja rich, not real rich in a global sense. I don't know about that. I don't know about that. I don't know about that. To say a dude that's worth 900 million ain't rich, that's crazy. That's crazy. And he may have bit the hand that feeds him. He may have, but see, 
if that's the case, then it's going to depend on whether or not the person is going to shut him down or just teach him a lesson. Look, Hour 9 said Bill and Kells went and Epstein, so he definitely is. Okay. And let's be real about this. Let's be real about this. Some of y'all don't want Puffy to go to prison because of what he did. Some of y'all want him to go to prison because you just like to see a rich nigga lose. You think I don't know that? That's why, that's why right now, even though they haven't even arrested Puffy, y'all already talking about Jay-Z. Y'all just like to see a rich nigga lose. Let's be real. Some of y'all just like to see a rich dude lose. On some, man, look at his house. Look at all his cars. It's time for him to lose. <laughs> you'll, you'll go to the movies and watch the Godfather and root for Vito Corleone, you'll root for Michael Corleone, but but when it come to Puffy, it's like, lock him up! <laughs> Yo, shout out to James. <laughs> Yo, it's funny because y'all will watch some of the most heinous dudes on TV. You'll watch The Sopranos and root for Tony Soprano. You'll watch The Godfather and root for The Godfather. You, you'll watch Vito, you'll watch Carlito and root for him. You'll watch Paid in Full root for them. But then when it comes to somebody in real life, <laughs> like a Jay-Z, all of a sudden y'all got an impeccable moral compass. Like, get out of here, bro. <laughs> and look. I'm not saying, I don't know what any of them have done. If they've done any of the things that they're accused of, they wrong for that. And whatever it's going to be, it's going to be. But I'm just telling you what I know about the country I live in. Okay? I'm not no multimillionaire. I ain't got no ton of money. But I tell you this right now. When I go to the airport, when I go certain places, and, and, and I'm able to pay to be in certain areas and stuff, I get treated differently. So if I'm experiencing that at my level, I can only imagine what these dudes is experiencing. Like for real, money, money changes things, bro. Money changes things. Money, money will change things to this degree, right? You could be broke and <laughs> the police got a warrant for you. They'll come to your house and, and bust the door in with one of them things and knock the door off the hinges, come up in the house, rough up everybody in the house, rough up your, your wife, your kids, all of that. Make them lay on the floor, put their arms behind their back and zip tie them even though they're not going to arrest them just to get to you. And then they'll grab you, zip tie you and bring you out the door and ram you into the door before they take you outside and then throw you in the back of the car and take you to the damn station and talk trash to you. And then tell you flat out, we don't got to reimburse you for that door. Because if you got a warrant, we can bust the door down. We can take a tank. In L.A., they got a tank that got like a freaking battering ram on it. And they'll come and they'll hit the front of your house and knock the whole front of the house down. And the, and the stormtroopers are running the house and snatch you up. 
all because you broke. But if you rich, guess what? Police will hop on the phone. What's his, what's his attorney's number? You know his attorney's number? Yeah, I got it right here, chief. Yeah, um, you, you know your client has this warrant, right? Yeah, we're aware of it. Well, um, you know, we, we don't want to come down to his house and embarrass him in front of his neighbors. Um, do, do you have an ETA of when he's going to turn himself in? Uh, yeah, uh, he's gonna, he's got a couple of things that he needs to get squared away. He's going to turn himself in at about 5 PM. Um, and we're going to come to the back door because we're not doing the perp walk. Okay. Click. But the, the goofy shit is y'all watch TV and you believe the stuff you see on TV, you think that it doesn't matter if you got money or don't have money. You think that everybody's treated the same. They're not. They're not treated the same. Not by no stretch of the imagination. They know that rich guy's gonna post bail, so guess what they do? Well, you know, come on down to the station and get fingerprinted or whatever. He goes down to the station, he gets fingerprinted or whatever, and walks right back out the door. Why? He don't got to get no bondsman. And really, you're getting screwed over when you get a bondsman. Because the bondsman is putting up the money for the bond. He's putting up the bond. You're paying him 10% just for putting up the bond. If you got your own money, let's say that your bond is, is let's say your bond is $50,000. If you got $50,000, guess what? You go down there, you give them the $50,000. Guess what? When you show up to court, they give you the 50,000 back. Cause the whole purpose of the bond is just to make sure you go to court. So if you got 50,000 and you got to get a bondsman, guess what? You paying $5,000 for nothing. So it's different. It's different. I'll tell you something else. When they know you can afford a team of lawyers, they're not coming to your house with no pettiness. You know why? Because one, if you got a lot of money and you got a high profile, there's a couple of things you can do. One, any goofy charge they try to come at you with, you are gonna be able to fight it like that. Especially if you got a high powered attorney that's cool with the judge, cool with the prosecutor, cool with everybody. If you got a lawyer that's actually cool with the mayor, Guess what? When you think about bringing them charges, the mayor call up, hey man, what you, what you doing? What you doing? Cause guess what? Don't no prosecutor want to get embarrassed because your track record of convictions determines the trajectory of your career. And don't let it be a dude like, for instance, if I became a multimillionaire, like, let's just say I became a multimillionaire, like, you know, $20 million, right? When the mayor of this city runs for reelection, guess who going to contribute to that reelection? When the, when the police department is doing a fundraiser, guess who's going to contribute to that fundraiser? And I'm not talking about no little amount. I'm talking about an amount so big that they know my name. See, black folk, y'all don't know how to play the game. Y'all don't know how to play the game. There's a game that's being played. And because you don't want to assimilate into American culture and American society, 
you're literally playing a game that one, you don't know the rules to, and two, you're not effectively engaging in. It's like playing basketball and you don't know how to dribble. You don't know what a foul is. You don't know what a traveling is. You, you don't know what any of that is. See, people that are rich, that know how to play the game, when they play basketball, they're playing like Michael Jordan. They're playing like Steph Curry. See, if you're a rich guy, you're supposed to know who the mayor is. You and the mayor are supposed to know each other. You and the councilman of your city are supposed to know each other. You you supposed to know everybody. LW said, if smart, he'll go see Russell, save the lawyer fees. Art of war is winning without fighting, right? Not go broke, risk fighting. Peace, brethren. He's not going to go broke. If he, if he had to fight this case, he's not going to go broke fighting this case. He's not. If he, if he has to fight this case, he's not going to go broke fighting this case. And if there's going to be a case, I know he's going to fight it. The reason why I know he's going to fight it is because he sold revolt. He sold revolt. Why would he sell revolt? Trying to get liquid. So he's either trying to do one of two things. He's either getting the cash so he can bounce or he's getting rid of, he's getting rid of that so that he can fight this fight. One of the two. One of the two. And we know he's not stupid because the moment that Cassie sued him and he saw all of those other lawsuits coming, what's the first thing he did? He trimmed the fat. He got rid of any extra expenses. So guess what? Young Miami. Bye. No more shopping sprees. You need to go find somebody else to be a sugar daddy. Nope, not doing it. He's not a stupid guy. He's not a stupid guy. You, you can't go this long doing what he's doing, allegedly, and evade any drama, trouble, and, and this many years. And be a dumb guy. He's not a dumb guy. By no stretch of the imagination. But see, that's why a lot of black people see this. Why do you think so many people talk about generational wealth, right? Shout out to King Yobi. He said, keep up the great work, man. Peace, love, life. Appreciate you. Why do you think... Why do you think they're always talking about generational wealth? Any of the political, any of the thought leaders of our time, why, why do you think in our community, they're always talking about generational wealth? The reason why is because the only other thing, the only thing that is more important than money Right? Press a one if y'all want to know what's more important than money. There's this one thing that's more important than money when it comes to the way our society operates. Press one if you want to know what's more important than money. What's more important than money 
Look, somebody said respect. Somebody said health. Somebody said God. Somebody said power and influence. Somebody said your name. Somebody said health. See what I mean? See what I mean? Somebody said family. Somebody said integrity. Somebody said community. No. No, 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 no. What's more important than money is relationships. What's more important than money is relationships. In other words, it's not what you know, it's who you know. Right? So, the reason why generational wealth is so important is because when you don't have generational wealth, when you're the first person in your family to become a millionaire, the one thing that you don't have that other people have that have been millionaires for generations is relationships. See, when you have generational wealth, you may have relationships with other prominent families that go back a couple of generations. That matters. That matters. You feel what I'm saying? That matters. You, you gotta, you, you have to. The reason why black people never get the opportunity to create those relationships is because you don't have enough black people with generational wealth that are in positions of power. Like, a, a prime example is Atlanta, Georgia, right? In Atlanta, Georgia, you got Fannie Willis, you got Stacey Abrams, you got all of these different black folks that are in positions of power. You even have black folk there that are millionaires and stuff. But instead of them cultivating their power and influence in the proper way, they're using it for pettiness. They're using it for BS, like Fannie Willis being allowing herself to be used as a puppet to 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 freaking go after Donald Trump. You you see what I'm saying? They're using it for goofiness. They're not using it properly. See what Fannie Willis should be thinking about is her legacy for the next 50 years. See, that's what people don't realize. If you're a first time millionaire or you just got power or influence in your generation, you're not gonna be able to do much. What you're supposed to be doing is you're supposed to keep that money flowing and keep building because your grandchildren are the, one that's, the ones that's really gonna be able to do something. So if you ever sit back and wonder why is Jay-Z going so hard in the paint? Why is Beyonce going so hard in the paint? Why are they grinding the way they're grinding? Why are they doing that? Beyonce don't gotta be on tour. He can go somewhere and sit down. Jay don't gotta be doing the stuff he's doing. He, got, he can go somewhere and sit down. I'm gonna tell you why. They're doing all of that. They're not even doing all of that for their kids. They're doing all of that for their kids' kids, for their children's children's children. That's why he's doing that. That's why he's doing that. And he's doing it the right way. And I'm not talking about his personal life, none of that. I'm talking about his, his strategy. His strategy is straight out of the 48 laws of power. And everybody can sit back and they can question his moves and all of that. When, when Jermaine Dupree 
got offered that deal by the NFL. And Jay-Z talked him out of it. And then a year later, Jay-Z got the deal with the NFL. Y'all will look at that like, oh man, that was messed up. What's wrong with him? You looking at it from a moral position. Jay-Z ain't looking at it from a moral position. If Jermaine Dupree was stupid enough to let him talk him out of it, oh well. Jay-Z thinking about his family. He's thinking about what he got going on. He's not hung up on this, uh, uh, we brothers and sisters and we got to stick together and all of that. No. No. He's playing the game for keeps. He's playing the power game. His daughter isn't even really an artist like that, and she already got Grammys. Beyonce's out there performing. He, she got her daughter out there dancing too. Even LeBron trying to get his son in the NBA. Like some people get it. Some people get it. You feel what I'm saying? Okay, I see right now I'm gonna have to let me let me let me go into my settings real quick because y'all y'all just don't know how to uh act like y'all got some sense. I see y'all putting words in here you shouldn't be putting in my chat, but it's all good. It's all good because I can fix that. And it's funny because y'all y'all love saying words that you don't even know you don't even understand what it is but you just love saying it Shout out to LW. He said, if he can do what you say he can and not worried, why can't he be found? Where is he? What you mean, why can't he be found? He don't want to be found. He don't want to be found. Now ain't the time for him to be in the spotlight. Y'all got things backwards. Y'all y'all really don't understand how to move. He didn't have to come out and make a statement. You know who came out and made a statement? His lawyer. With all of that going on, the last place he need to be is in front of a camera talking. The last place that he needs to be is in front of a news camera talking about something. Some people, they, they slow. When something like this happens, first thing they do is they want to do a press conference. Yeah, you know, all of these charges are, are fraudulent and, you know, we, we, we're going to do everything in our power to fight this and da da da. No. No. You have your lawyer make a statement. That's what you pay him for. That's what you pay him for. How you gonna get out there and say something? You liable to say something messed up. Said he did the same thing to Dame Dash. And see, that's, you know what? I'm going to tell you the truth. That's why I know it, it's, it's a wrap for black folk. Most black folk ain't never going to get any power. Ever. And, and the reason why is because early on in this country, you were infused with morality. 
They use the Christian Bible to turn you into moral authorities. So a lot of times, y'all don't care how it go down, just as long as you're able to take the moral high ground. Well, I'm a good person. It's like, bruh, in this world, you only got two types of people. You got the winners and you got the losers. You got the winners and you got the losers. Shout out to JR said, have you seen the documentary created by Jamie Johnson and heir to the Johnson and Johnson family talking about their wealth, access and privilege? Yes, I have. Yes, I have. Yes, I have seen that documentary. Did you see how mad his pops got because he was doing the documentary? Black Beauty said, and nobody else has those morals. Facts. Facts. Nobody else, nobody else has that moral dilemma except American black folk. But, but it's funny because it's ironic. The reason why it's ironic is because you only have morals when you're dealing with other people. That's the only time you have morals. Y'all, it, it's funny because y'all put your morals in the weirdest place. But we know that the black community ain't moral. Even though you pretend to be. What, what do I mean by this? You, you will split another Negro's wig at the drop of a hat. You will split another Negro's wig at the drop of a hat. You will try to hustle your own people out of their products and services. You don't really have morals. You just pretend to have them. Because you want to be viewed as benevolent and 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 christ-like and that's part of the reason why it's difficult for black people to gain wealth because you associate moral righteousness with humble living so because you have that misconstrued in your mind and because you've been taught that coming up in the community, you view everybody that's struggling and broke as righteous people and you view everybody that's elite and rich as wicked people. So why would you go after wealth with the ferocity that you would need to go after it in order to achieve it if you think that all it's going to do is make you an evil person. And this is why when somebody like a Jay-Z or a P. Diddy gets involved in the, or, or, or gets accused of something, you automatically want to believe it because they're rich. You automatically want to believe it. If some young dude that's broke runs from the police and the police end up deleting him and then the police come out and say that he was trying to grab their gun or he was trying to do something, you're not going to believe it. You know why you're not going to believe it? Because the young dude is broke. So because he's broke, you associate him with righteousness. He was just minding his business and you corrupt police officers did X, Y, Z. You just automatically believe it. 
But if somebody says a multi-millionaire has some sort of uh, 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 criminal uh, uh, organization, you automatically believe it. Because they're rich. You automatically believe it. And I'm not saying that Puffy and them didn't do anything. I'm not saying any of that. I'm just saying that's where your thought process is. And the reason why I know that is because when Jay-Z was, you know, you loved reasonable doubt, Jay-Z. You loved Can't You See Puffy when he was just dancing and trying to make his money. But once they become billionaires, once they, this is another reason, this, this is the reason why you don't like Drake. Reason why you don't like Drake. This is the reason why you don't hate on J. Cole. The reason why you don't hate on J. Cole is because even though he's successful financially, he doesn't show it. Because he's smart enough to know that the moment he starts showing his success, driving around in Benzes and Ferraris and wearing jewelry and nice clothes, you're going to start hating him. That is the curse of the black community. You hate anybody that's successful and you love everybody that's an underdog. This is why you're on Kendrick's side over Drake's because in that scenario, Kendrick looks like the underdog and Drake looks like the successful dude that's on top. This is the psychology of black people. And this is why black people can't get anywhere. <clears throat> This is why black folk can't get anywhere. I saw a video last night where a guy was like, yo, I think it's a shame that Michael Jordan don't want to sign autographs. He's coming to my city and he's already made a statement that he's not going to sign autographs. I think it's ridiculous that all of these people have spent millions of dollars on his sneakers. People done died over his sneakers and he don't want to sign an autograph. And I'm sitting there thinking to myself like, nigga, he don't got to sign your autograph. He don't want to. Then he turned around and said Kyrie Irving was coming out of the game. He had his family with him and he stopped to sign autographs. This man made millions of dollars. He don't have to do that. Which is it? Why is it Kyrie don't have to do it, but Michael has to do it? I'll tell you why. Because Mike is a billionaire. Kyrie isn't. Black people align themselves with whoever is the biggest victim. If you remember recently, Monique was on Club Shay Shay and she was talking about D.L. Hughley. Everybody was on Monique's side, not because she was right and not because D.L. Hughley was wrong, but because D.L. Hughley is perceived to be more successful than Monique. That's the reason why. How do I know that? Because the moment that Monique's son came out against her, y'all changed on her overnight. All of a sudden, she went from being righteous to being wicked. Why? Because her son is less successful than she is. So your allegiance shifted based on who is the biggest victim. You can take that model and you could apply it anywhere. You can apply it anywhere. I can always tell you which person black folk are going to be on the side of based on their level of victimhood. For the past few years, you've hated Candace Owens. Couldn't stand her talking points. The moment she gets fired from the Daily Wire, I think we can understand what Candace is saying now. I think Candace, you know, she's been making a lot of good points and 
What? What? It happens all the time. It never fails. When I was sitting in that Honda Accord, broke, struggling, sitting in that Honda Accord with the roof hanging down, with a dusty hat, struggling, everybody loved me. The audience and content creators. Moment I got a little paper. Got this dope set up. Sit up here with, with, with jewel encrusted, you know what I'm saying? Jewelry. Diamond encrusted jewelry and shit. Now all of a sudden, Negroes can't stand me. Now they can't stand me. And this is a reason why a lot of black people in the community don't strive to be successful because they don't want to be hated by their own people. It's so bad that when some people that are black become successful, they suffer from what is called survivor's remorse. Why do they suffer from survivor's remorse? Oh, it, it's because, you know, they're successful now and they wish they they wish that they could help everybody and they don't have the ability to help everybody. No, you got to dig deeper than that. Why do they want to help everybody? Most people that have survivor's remorse, they wish they could snap their fingers and make all of their family members just as rich as they are. You know why? so that they can go back around you and you treat them like a normal person. So that you don't hate them for being successful. So that you're not trying to use them because they're successful. Shout out to the terrible Ivan. He said, I must be a different breed because I don't fit the mold of any of the things you just outlined. <laughs> like real talk, because once you, once you become a successful black person, you're never going to be treated the same. The only black people that's going to treat you right are people that have as much or more money than you. They're the only ones that's going to treat you right. They are the only ones that's going to treat you right. If you got family members that are, um, if you got family members that are still broke and struggling, the first thing they're going to think about you the moment you get some paper, you go out and buy you a new car, you go out and buy you a new house, you go buy you some new clothes. You know the first thing they're going to say? Oh, he think he better than us. And then when you don't want to go around them because you don't want them giving you attitude and talking crazy to you, that just reinforces their opinion that you think you're better than them.
me see if I can find this clip with 50 talking about this. Yo, make sure y'all hit the cash app. We still, bro, what is going on with the support, man? Jesus Christ. Yo, I need 10 people to hit the cash app and support the show, man. Let's see. I can't freaking find it. Damn it, I can't find it. So, th there's a part in 50's book where he talks about not wanting to go to his grandmother's house on Thanksgiving. Like, he'll go a day before to avoid the family.
I can't remember the, the chapter. Was it the first chapter? Maybe it was the first, maybe it was the introduction. There you go, right there. Hey, what? It's your fault. I'm talking. But my case had already disappeared. He didn't want to be found. I couldn't even follow them into the street. My mind was fuzzy and I couldn't think straight. I had to take several minutes to compose myself. There are very few times when I'm completely off kilter. But when they happen, they always involve family. Let me bump into a rapper who dissed me or a CEO I've had intense negotiations with, and I'm good. In fact, I'm great. Those moments don't faze me. They're what I live for. Only family seems to faze me. It's not just my relationship with Marquise either. I don't even like going home on holidays anymore because seeing my family makes me so tense. I stopped by my grandmother's old house the day before Christmas to kick it with my grandfather, but I won't come back on the actual holiday. Even if I only bring positive energy into the house, someone is inevitably going to bring their negativity towards me. An aunt or a cousin will end up saying, I'm tired of everybody kissing his ass because he's 50 cent. Shit, he ain't that special. Instead of a celebration, the entire night will be about what I did for one person but didn't do for everyone else. That sort of energy makes me extremely uncomfortable. Tired of everybody kissing his ass. He ain't that special, right? Look, I ain't even I ain't even got money like 50 cent and I already feel it. Already feel it. I already feel it. Like before I even got to this amount of subscribers. I already feel it. The last time I went to a family function, I could feel the vibe. Like I could feel it. There was a couple of family members that was happy to see me and spoke to me and stuff. But there was other family members that was cutting their eyes at me. And it's crazy because that's the sentiment, right? What 50 Cent said is the sentiment. If, if anybody's showing you love because you've succeeded at something, other people are going to get mad and jealous about it and be like, you know, tired of everybody kissing his ass. You know what I'm saying? Like, that, that freaking energy, that energy, that, that bullshit, you feel what I'm saying? And that's why I don't really like now, I don't really be breaking my neck to go to family functions if they have them. I don't, because I don't like that. I don't like that. I don't like that phony energy. I don't like that phony energy. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm, I'm the same dude. I'm the same person. You feel me? Like, just be happy for me. And that's it. I'm not going to act no different. But I'm telling you, black people got, got a serious issue when it comes to money, when it comes to success. They have a serious issue. They have a serious issue, like. What the hell is wrong with my mouse?
But I guess we're going to shut it down because, you know, we've been talking long enough and ain't nobody really contributing. So, you know, it is what it is. Uh, let's see. There's a couple people to hit the other cash app. Um, shout out to shout out to John. He said, that's how I found you was on YouTube shorts. Appreciate you, bro. <laughs> shout out to Billy Goat. He said, we know Rico and NY. They was doing this in the 90s. Yeah. <laughs> shout out to East Chill. Shout out to Thomas. He said, thanks for all you do. Appreciate it. <laughs> but yeah, like I said, man, um, that right there is one of the biggest issues with, with black folk, in my opinion, is like, we, we just don't understand the money game. And because we don't understand the money game, like me personally, and you know, I could end up being wrong, but I don't think, I don't think I'm wrong. I think that I think that Puffy ain't going to jail. And I'm not saying he don't deserve to go to jail, but what I'm saying is I don't think he's going to jail. I just don't. I don't think he's going to jail. Feel me? Like I said, I could be wrong. But, you know, it is what it is at the end of the day. But yo, I appreciate y'all for tuning in to the show, all of that good stuff. Make sure you guys check out my book on Amazon, The Angry Man Standard. All you have to do is look it up in the search bar or click the link in the description. Other than that, man, salute to everybody that came through and supported. Shout out to the whole chat. Shout out to the whole Beano Nation. I'm going to holler at you guys later. Deuces.